Manchester. How are you? Hey, who's from the inside of the city? Yeah? Who's from greater outside Manchester? Yeah? Okay, now raise your hand if you've ever broken into your own home. Yeah? Oh, look at this audience. I knew I was here for a reason. All right. Well, awesome. What about hacked your Facebook uh, of your, I don't know, loved one, your girlfriend, boyfriend? Anybody hacking Facebook? All right. Yeah? What about your wife's email? Anything like this? Yeah? Yeah, you, sir. What about that? How did you get in? Two-factor authentication? No, I don't want to know. Right. Will you come see me later? Yeah? All right. So I, I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to talk you, to you all about the creepiness, the creepy crawling of hacking. I'm here to scare you. No, just kidding. Um, I want to uh, basically approach a new idea for you because we've all been dealing with this thing called hacking. What does the word hacker mean to you? Anybody? Do you think of like a guy with a long ponytail and needs to shower for a few weeks and eats pizza pockets and Mountain Dew? Yeah? Do we think about that? Yeah? Okay. Well, you're right because there's a lot of them like that. But what about guys that look like me or girls that look like me? Yeah? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> yeah? So what about these guys? We talk about how more people are becoming online, more th things are being connected, and the risk landscape seems to go through the, through the roof. Talk to any number one of these people, some are a few of my uh, former clients and current clients, that have had big problems with hacking. Now, we go into our world and we see smart cities. Everything is talking to each other. Waistbands are talking to each other. Smart infrastructure. Everybody hears about the zombie apocalypse. Who's ready for the zombie apocalypse? Raise your hand. Yeah? You, sir, what do you, what do, you do to prepare? Um, I have lots of tins of food. Yeah, and tins of food in your house? <laughs> yeah. What about who else? Who, anybody else got some good tips we can share? We're all here for my YouTubers. The idea of this smart city approach scares people. And it also, and it should, because now we got to deal with smart cars. Yeah, now your brakes are being able to be manipulated by remote control. What? Now, here's something that I want to talk to you about, the thing that really bothers me, smart homes. Yeah, what if I told you that I could access your inbox through your, mail, your microwave? I mean, do we think about this? What, what I think is really interesting is that we have no problem demanding convenience, but yet no one's here talking about security. This is a huge market that's getting bigger and bigger by the second, but the security companies don't want to deal with it. No, they'd rather get big government tenders and big contracts. Never, no one talks about what's happening inside our own homes, the attack vectors that all of us have ourselves. Right? Because here we are talking in, in, in a world full of internet of vulnerabilities. Yes, everything being connected. When I talk about telnet protocols, who understands what I'm talking about? My geeks out there. Yeah, yeah, I see you out there. So when I, just so you can go home and go and impress your friends, a telnet protocol is when one computer talks to another computer on the same network. And a lot of this was a big problem in the early 90s or mid 90s when we were first, you know, computerizing and talking on, you know, on this thing called the World Wide Web. Now now we're in this world, we are, uh, all of our 65,535 ports on our computers are now talking to our microwaves, the brakes of our car, the handbags, everything. So am I scaring anybody yet? Are we all scared? Yeah? Well, the idea that I want to share with you today, this is another great slide. This is the great doomsday that everybody is inside your computer for over 200 days. What the hell do you do? Yeah, who's, who's ever had somebody inside their computer? Yes, you, sir? What, how'd you know? Is that when you hacked your wife's email? <laughs> yeah, you should definitely see me later. So the idea, when, when you hear these kind of stats or you read the, the media, everyone freaks out because this term hacker it keeps coming and popping back up over and over again. Especially when you have things that happened like last week where this, like, some guy wrote an automated script that basically surfed the internet for that same telnet protocol we just talked about and basically found 36 credentials. 36 credentials. Do we get this? Okay, so the reason what I was talking about earlier, where we have our microwave, our handbag, our brakes of our car, our computer, our laptop, our iPad, all of this is talking to each other, and each one has its own set of, th of threats, its own set of vulnerabilities and ports. And the fact that some dude wrote a script that went out and surfed the internet and found and used passwords like admin, admin1, admin123, right? And found 36. You, sir, right up front. Steve, raise your hand. 
Yeah, you have 36 credentials. You have 36 credentials. Hell, think of what happens with 136 credentials. And this is supposed to be the largest DDoS attack? Whoa, wait a minute. Everyone take out your phone and follow this guy. He's one of the most skilled hackers in this country and he was all over it. The press was going crazy with how could possibly this have happened? And let me tell you boys and girls, and I'm not here to scare you, believe it or not. Um, this is just the tip of the iceberg. All these things that are talking to each other, all these layers of vulnerabilities, these ports, we are not just a port-driven society. Each and every one of us is our own little telecoms company. We've got more layers of ports industry can't keep up. There's no way government can do it. So what do we do? Just sit here and doom and, and, and moan and, and talk about this zombie apocalypse with this guy? I mean, look, here's one of the things that happened. When I first moved over here, everyone kept talking about how safe I should feel because CCTV was everywhere. Now, I wouldn't say safe was the word I thought of, but you know, I sit there and I look at what's happening with this Telnet protocol, these automated scripts, and this thing called CCTV man in the middle attacks. You gain one admin right with one credential and you can get in and, and suddenly you start taking over computers, microwaves, and this is a really scary sc slide that's supposed to make you realize how many bad guys are out there. But they scan these networks and they find and they use scripts to find which places can open up online and where, where we least suspect them. And a lot of times it makes you look like this. Who's ever looked like this? Yeah? This is kind of like my self-reflection, my daily routine from the girl whose password used to be let me in. <laughs> Right? I mean, I was super annoyed by this, and I was hacked 14 times last year, over and over again. This guy's like, is she still talking about hacking? Yeah. <laughs> I still wanna now take you back to why I'm up here. Because I started something a few years ago, and it made me really think, maybe, just maybe, there might be something more to throwing all my friends in jail. There might be something to this concept. Here we are choosing to allow technology into our lives. Yes, boys and girls, we have chosen to allow this to happen, and that's okay, don't freak out, right? This is, going, this is evolving our society and we welcome it with open arms. Of course we want convenience. It's nice to have a, a, a home system we can control on the go, absolutely. And it's okay if we wanna be able to have nicer things that talk to each other, that make it convenient for us. But now I wanna say, that little image I told you about the boy with the, with the long haircut or the long ponytail that eats pizza pockets and only drinks Mountain Dew, I wanna redefine this image and raise it to a different level to talk about the, the pursuit of knowledge, how target focused, how, sen how, pers how perseverance is just part of the ethos. Understanding determination is an understatement. You know, the, the term hacker is about getting to the root of a problem, taking something apart and seeing how it operates. And this is where I started thinking, maybe, just maybe, if I could get people to understand that hacker doesn't necessarily have to be a bad word, hacker can be a good word, and if you raise it to the negative one power for all my math geeks out there, it inverts it of itself. So if we now go by the media's definition of being criminal, raise it to the negative first of itself, let's call it critical. Because actually, there's a lot of people that don't understand what is black hat hacking. Sir, did you understand that you could probably be sentenced to a lifetime by, behind bars for hacking insensitive data or sensitive data? Yeah, or your wife's, I mean, the sentencing on hacking your wife's email account is insane. Hacking a Facebook account is way higher than some crim, other crim, uh, criminal activity. Right, so we need to think a better way of mental health. We talked about uh, health and well-being earlier. We need to find a better way of channeling this because at the end of the day, boys and girls, this is a human cognitive behavioral problem. Humans fighting humans. This isn't about just automated scripts and some dude in his basement. This is about understanding a different way of looking at things. Well, then people always freak out because they're like, Jennifer, oh my gosh, you're teaching people criminal activity. Are you really gonna teach people how to break into Facebook? Absolutely. You know what I'm also gonna teach you? I'm gonna teach you how to turn on the remote uh, f camera on your phone from somewhere else because I want you to understand how it works. I want you to take ownership and stop playing a victim. Understanding how these things happen is the first place, the first protocol in which you can secure yourself. 
So I create an environment that openly champions ethics and integrity, tries to set the bar just a little bit higher. And, I, and a lot of times I meet people in law enforcement or industry that think, you know, kids don't understand ethics. So here we are teaching kids as young as five in this country to read code. By age eight, they're writing code. By age nine, 10, 11, they are exploiting code. Okay, so let's teach them about what, what, what this means. A beautiful story happened last summer when I sat down with my cousins. They were five, eight, and 11. And we were uh, watching Miles on YouTube. And um, as we were searching through, there was, a, there was a search term, how to hack your school VPN. And the kids went crazy. Please, Jen, please teach us, please teach us, please teach us. I'm like, all right, let's go. So we click on the link. And before we start, I said, let me ask you something. Would you go to your school at nighttime? And the five-year-old on my lap was like, no, the lights are off. It's <laughs> a great answer. Yes, the lights are off. What else? The doors are locked. Great. But where's a big window? And I've got a big brick, and I'm going to throw that brick through that window, and now I'm in. Is this OK? Any more OK than breaking in online? Suddenly, these kids tick tock. They understood where I was coming from. They, they were picking up the angles I was trying to make. I didn't have to bark orders at them. Suddenly, I could make it a little bit more feasible. Would you go break into your neighbor's house? No. Then why would you do it online? Another great story happened when my friend's kid comes home from school and proudly announced to the whole dining room, girls' passwords are shorter than boys' passwords. I'm like, yeah? And he said, I did some research at school, and I found out that from the faculty, parents, students, and uh, kids, uh, staff, that if I did a comparative analysis by gaining admin rights and, and, and taking everyone's passwords, that girls' passwords are shorter than boys. Mom went through the roof. This is illegal. She started freaking out. I'm like, right, tell me how you did it. I want to know. Because really, that kid didn't understand. Because you know what his words were? This couldn't be illegal. It's too easy. Hmm. It's too easy. So whenever anybody asks me, what exactly do you do at Hacker House, I try to give them this kind of example. Of course. <laughs> Here's a picture of our lair. <laughs> we sit at home and hack, and there's a picture of Wesley. And we try to give this image. Yes, of course, we can hack your machine. We, we are hired out as a team. We do consulting work. But I, here's, here's where we're a little bit different. I'm going to hire the guys that didn't make it through a recruitment process, that are never going to last a day in corporate life, that wouldn't exactly ever think about going to government, but they've got the minds that you need to secure your system. They're the ones that companies dream about talking to, but never could because they're not fishing where their fish are. They don't understand how to communicate with this, this culture because hackers are not just criminal thieving, credit card stealing, password sniffing bums in their basement. In fact, hackers, the word hacking, back to my original definition of pursuit of knowledge, is actually the most beautiful thing of understanding how to make things better. So if you came and, you, and, and uh, asked to come work for us, the first thing my co-founder would do is sit you down and be like, hey, have you ever put together a computer? Have you ever assembled a 3D printer? Have you sir, ever written any code? No? Go back and do so and call me when you do. And guess what? That skills shortage everyone keeps talking about? Hmm, what shortage? I've gotten 30 applications in the last three weeks. Everybody wants to be a part because they're dying to have a place of the, of the, where they can pull things apart. You see what this is? This is a fob. Yeah, A fob is something you would use to turn on and off your alarm system. So understanding how to break into an alarm helps us know how to advise companies on how to make it more secure. This is for Emma. <gasps> <laughs> my graph, right? And what this is is this radio uh, flow graph. And down here is a signal analysis. And we can read these waves, analyze these waves in ones and zeros, the same as we would on code. So the wider the, uh, the, wider the waves, that means a zero, and the closer together they are the ones. So we're reading this zero, zero, one, 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 one. And the boys can now put this together to make other frequency, write other codes to connect all their devices. Here we are sending packets into space. We openly champion and teach you what's up. Everybody hear about cloud infrastructure? Yeah, well, this is all run by wireless technology. Everybody gets scared when they talk about drones. Uh, drones affect our privacy. Drones are a nuisance. Drones, I mean, come on, they're used for law enforcement, search and rescue, scaffolding, construction. There is no shortage of reasons to not know how to use a drone. Drones are actually the biggest hit. We have drone days. Come and see me later if you're interested. But they're awesome. You know, and there could be many ways of their practicalities, including radio frequencies, SDRs. We all want to move everything into cloud. Well, do we understand that cloud means just another computer somewhere else, right? How do you think they uh, transport information? Well, satellites. Do we understand that satellites can also be affected by computers? 
Here's a group picture of what we, what we do when we bring everybody together for our community events. This isn't about endorsing criminality. This is not about encouraging people to break the law. This is about giving them a place to come together and use these skills that don't exactly tick every box in a corporate world. The difference between Hacker House and the other big corporates is I'm not gonna charge you two grand to press a button. I'm gonna have you come in and understand how things work and operate, and if you don't want to, that's okay. But at least you know that whenever something like this happens, you know, you wanna learn about hardware hacking or intro to um, radio frequencies or any kind of Help I've Been Hacked series that we do, you know you can come train with the best. This is the problem that I get all the time. Please help me hack my boyfriend's email. Please help me get into her Facebook. Please, I'll pay whatever you want. Do we understand this is like life sentences behind bars? This is absolute fraud. But yet, who am I to sit there and tell you how, what to do? It's the worst feeling when you know somebody's inside your computer and you don't know where to go. But guess what? The UK is the only country that has a place to commit, uh, report fraud. Either do so or directly or come to some place like Hacker House. So that way, at least you know that you're dealing with the best because this, boys and girls, is our future. It's not gonna be another guns blazing out and destroying missiles. It's gonna be dudes behind a computer manipulating machine code and understanding how to get inside your computer and they're not gonna be, or your homes, and they're not gonna be doing it in the way we think. It's gonna be something as stupid as a, an automated script through your microwave. When I had one of our last community nights, I had one of the boys, Wesley, who's in the front row, ask me, what do we do, when I asked him, what are we doing this for? What does Hacker House really mean to you? And he said to me, when, when the industry starts accepting that ethical hacking is what we need, this is the way forward. And we've got two locations, so if you wanna join us on either one, come and see me afterwards. But and now, at least, if I can share anything before I go, it's to share with you that next time you get hacked, at least you know who to call. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.